Once upon a time, there was a little engine called Thomas. He was a squat square engine with a tall cab. He almost looked like a submarine. He was a cheeky little engine who enjoyed playing tricks on some of the bigger engines. Not so long ago, one of the bigger engines named Gordon had played a vengeful trick on the shunter and pulled him along at high speed with the express. Ever since that day, Thomas hadn't felt quite right. He complained of aches and pains all over and his fire was becoming harder and harder to maintain while shunting. Worst of all, his brake sometimes wouldn't hold his weight. This meant he would begin moving on his own even when they were fully on. The fat director had punished Gordon by putting him on goods work. This made Thomas feel a little better. What ails you, little Thomas? I've been hearing complaints from your crew and your fellow engines that you've been having, um, issues. Thomas explained his situation to the fat director. The stout gentleman turned and scratched his chin. I'll speak to some colleagues of mine. They'd be more informed of your mechanical faults than I would. In the meantime, I ask that you continue working as you have been to the best of your abilities. He smiled and strolled away, leaving Thomas with a lot to consider. Thomas told some of the bigger engines what the fat director had said. Oh yes, I know which friend he's referring to. Who... who is it? The fat director is great friends with the scrap merchant down on the old Brendan branch. I've seen many engines with mechanical faults and have been sent away from the yards and they never come back. I'm sure that's where they go. <laughs> Thomas trembled and looked around the yards, too frightened to ask anymore. That night, Thomas couldn't sleep. He kept thinking over what 98462 had said. My brothers and sisters never had problems like me. Maybe I will be sent for scrap. He stayed awake until dawn, exhausted and anxious. This began to affect his work ethic. He was clumsy with the coaches and rough with the trucks. His brakes didn't help the situation either. The troublesome trucks all silently agreed that if the shunter ever took a train with them, they'd give him a run for his money. All in all, Thomas was causing a lot of confusion and delay. Anything the matter, Thomas? You're usually more focused than this. Thomas gave a small peep of his whistle and painfully returned to shunting. When Thomas backed into the sheds that night, the bigger engines began swarming around him like angry bees. My train was ten minutes late because of you. I mean, what kind of shunter are you? You're as slow as a rusted coffee pot! You arranged my goods train back to front! Thomas was humiliated and felt very inadequate. He felt like bursting into tears. Just then, Edward puffed into the sheds and heard the commotion. Number 87546 and 98462! Have you been too been picking on little Thomas? Must I report this to Sir Topham Hatt himself? 87546 quieted down after that. 98462 smirked and whispered slyly. Won't be much to report once he's sent for scrap. Scrap? Who's going for scrap? The word alone made the engines uncomfortable. The fact director told our troublesome tank engine he'll be giving him away to a colleague. I'm sure it will be the scrap merchant on the Brendam branch. The other engines gave Thomas a pitying look. The poor tank engine felt very depressed. Edward, however, wasn't convinced. He never considered the fact director would ever scrap an engine. The next morning, Thomas woke with a bump. A black tender engine had coupled up in front of him. Excuse me, what are you doing? The tender engine sniffed as the fat director stepped down from his cab. Now then, little Thomas, it's time we mended your issues once and for all. This locomotive will do your duties while you're away. 
Thomas gave a small smile as he was hauled away. The fact director then turned his attention to his other engines. I've been hearing all sorts of stories from the yard and stash. I would never scrap one of my engines, and I will do everything in my power to ensure Thomas has the same opportunities as the rest of you to be a really useful engine. He looked around the sheds. The other engines glared at 87546 and 98462. I will speak with you two later. And the two big engines slithered out to collect their trains. The other big engines smiled at one another and puffed out of the sheds, wondering what would happen to their shunter. The months passed. James, the new engine, became the station pilot in Thomas's absence. Gordon was given the express once again, and Edward was sent to reconstruct the Brendam branch. One afternoon, Gordon, Henry, and Edward were all at the big station with their passenger trains. A large crowd gathered around the station. What's all this? I've to leave soon. Just then, they heard a whistle echo in the distance. An unfamiliar engine came around the corner. The engine had six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. The engine also had a large number one on its side tank. Thomas? Who else were you expecting? The other engines were in shock. They couldn't believe it was the same engine. The fat director stepped out of his office and smiled. So it was true. Crew can repair any sick engines. Interesting. He glanced at his number three engine and returned to his office. From that day on, Thomas was faster and stronger than he ever felt. He kept the rolling stock in order and became even firmer friends with the big engines. 87546 and 98462 have been relocated to the mainland, never to return to Sodor. Although Thomas didn't know it at the time, little engines could do big things.